Welcome to Our City. A few things going around the city of Elizabeth this week. On Saturday, April 2nd, at 9 o'clock in the morning, I'm going to join the Elmore Youth Baseball League for their annual parade, kicking off the season. The parade begins at Springfield Road in the city of Elizabeth and will finish at the Hanratty Complex on Westfield Avenue. Later that afternoon at 3 o'clock, I'm going to join the Department of Health and Human Services as well as members of the community for the annual Autism Awareness Walk. This will be in honor of World Autism Awareness Day. This event will take place at the Veterans Memorial Waterfront Park at the end of Elizabeth Avenue and Front Street. For more information, call 908-820-4050. And later that evening will be the 23rd anniversary dinner of the Elizabeth Youth Soccer Club. And that will be held at the Portuguese Instructive Social Club on Routes 1 and 9 and Grove Street. For more information, please contact Ms. Carla Rodriguez of the Portugal Day Committee at 908-347-4209. And on Monday, April 4th at 10 o'clock, I'm going to attend a health conference for National Public Health Week, which will be held at the Neighborhood Health Center located at 184 First Street. I would like to now take the opportunity to wish one of our residents, Mr. Buddy Burrill, a lot of luck as he will participate in a bowling tournament at Brunswick Zone Carolina Lanes in New Brunswick on April 2nd. Good luck, buddy. We're all rooting for you. So if you need more information on these events or any other events, please call our public information office at 908-820-4124. So please stay with us after these messages where we're going to talk with some nurses about um, ooh, health issues. We have some of the finest teachers in the country. And then they graduate. Kane University. Welcome back to our city where I'm pleased to be joined by Miss Eileen Kelly, who's the supervisor of Elizabeth Public Nurses, and Miss Karen Schott, who's the Assistant Supervisor of Nursing. Eileen, Karen, welcome to the show. Hello. Thank you. Karen, first time for you, right? Yes, it is. Eileen, you've been on before. (laughs) Yes, I have. So should we start with Karen? Tell us about yourself, how long you've been in nursing. Sure. Give me me some background. Sure. I've been in uh, nursing for 30 years. Ah, you don't look that old. Come on. (laughs) And I've been doing public health nursing for 25 years. And you're, oh. you went to school for your degree in? I went to Seton Hall University okay. and received my baccalaureate in nursing. Um, do I have to say what year? <laughs> you do not. No. <laughs> okay, good. Seton Hall Back Nursing in, School. Yes. Is, that in, is that in Orange? Co- South Orange? Yes, yeah, South is Orange. Location? No, it's in, it was in South, South Orange. Orange. Yeah, that's where the is location is. Is it still there, by the way? Yes, it is. Oh, okay. Yes, it is. So I've been doing that. And then I also went to uh, Jersey City University for a few years and received my certified school nursing uh, certificate. Good. You so enjoy, I have public, licensure you enjoy the public side of Absolutely. I do. I enjoy okay. it. So Eileen, you grew up with this, right? In, in the, I actually um, was born and raised in Staten Island. I came I to Jersey and Elizabeth and I went to Elizabeth General Hospital School of Nursing. So I graduated there and went to Union College and I started working at Elizabeth General Hospital, you know, years ago. Um, then I, you know, raised a family, and um, you know, I was still in and out of nursing, working in nursing homes. And then I graduated from Kane University with, um, you know, my uh, bachelor's, my BSN in nursing in 2003. So, so when you went to Elizabeth General Medical Center, did they have the dorms for the students back I, then? I lived in them. You did. I used yes, to visit them. I know you did. Yeah. I remember you a can't time tell because those stories. I can't tell those stories no. because <laughs> a lot of the students were from Elizabeth, you know, and I, I was. And we you were know, just looking for a date. That's right. Yeah. So it was funny. A lot of a lot of good times. So they, those those dorms are long gone. Yes, they and are. The and program they, the program now is strictly uh, uh, yeah, travel. Yeah, you're right. right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So National Public Health Week. Um, every year we do this. Can you? Who wants to start? Tell well, us a little It's usually about the first week in April, um, April 4th to about the 10th. But the city of Elizabeth is actually extending it a little because of the autism uh, walk. They're doing that on April 2nd, and then we, we're ending it on April the 11th. They have some other events. Um, so we have a lot of activities planned. Um, 
you know, they should be posted, you know, on the, the City of Elizabeth um, website. They're having um, a basketball game. They, we're, we're actually having, um, I put my glasses on, um, like the Friday, April 1st is where I should have asked her what year she graduated from uh, when yes. she's in the classes. Uh, right? Yes. Um, <laughs> okay, Friday, April the 1st is where Denim for Autism and the $5 donation, you know, would be collected for that. And then they have the walk. And then on uh, Monday, uh, besides, you know, the pref press conference you're going to, we're doing uh, lead screening. Uh, the Peterstown Community Center, uh, after hours, like from 3 to 5, and we normally do that at our clinics, but we thought it'd be good for National Public Health Week. And then in light of everything that's going on, it just happens to coincide with, you know, everything that's going on in Newark. But, you know, so it is, is there, Karen, is there a theme for this National Public Health Week or? Yes, the theme uh, for the Health Week. It's, so it's, it's, uh, it's written here. somewhere. It's glo global, oh, health global health. It's global health, and it's about um, reaching out nation. to all the communities all across the nation. And it's the healthiest nation. We're trying to promote the healthiest nation in one generation. So global health, I mean, one of the things I'm wrestling with is should we do a brochure in the city of Elizabeth about the Zika virus? I mean, sure. we should do yeah, it, that right? That would be great. We actually sure. are monitoring, you know, um, residents, you know, when, when they're coming in, like the doctors, if they know that they're pregnant and they visited the countries, and we probably have about 15 that I know of, you know, they don't have the Zika virus, but they're being monitored, you know, until the blood test comes back, like in the... So in, in this, in this uh, disease, I mean, we don't, we haven't had mosquitoes yet, but we're going to get them in May or sure. June. Right. Now, the mosquitoes that are akin to this area are not the ones carrying this disease, but eventually they're going to get here, right? These mosquitoes probably. I would think well, so, you would yeah. think so. Yeah. You know, with all the traveling back and forth. Yeah, carry them. Yeah. So anyway, we're going to do I that mean, brochure we'll after talking to you guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And send it out to I all the residents, so at least idea. they know what to uh, what to expect. So the Department of Health is doing a lot of things. And Karen, you want to jump in on what Eileen was saying or follow up on sure. some of the we're, other issues we're doing? On on Tuesday, we're having our STD program. And in conjunction with the STD program, we're having Trinitas come and do HIV testing during the uh, STD clinic. And uh, that would be free testing for um, all adults, 18 and over, um, can come and have that done. On Wednesday, we're having um, we're having our pediatric clinics, which we have uh, Wednesday mornings, and then in the afternoon we're doing our blood pressure and anemia screening program for National Public Health Week, and that'll run from one to two o'clock in the afternoon at the Peterstown Community Center. So, Karen, let's talk about the STD, which is sexually transmitted diseases, and HIV. And when I was over there, getting a tour and learning about these two diseases from Eileen. It's an extremely confidential process, and I think you need to tell our viewers that this is done in a confidential way. It's absolutely confidential. Um, when uh, the residents or anyone comes to the clinic to uh, be checked, we do ask for ID, you know, just for identification purposes only. Once we get the identification, um, we give them a uh, personalized uh, ID number that's just for that individual person. And then from that point on, we recognize and we acknowledge that person through the ID number. Um, and the, when they come to the clinic, they sign our paperwork and our information. And we also discuss with them that anything that goes on there is completely and highly confidential. Um, we do not share this information with anyone else. The only way anybody else would share it is if you, meaning the patient, were to share that with their you know, friends or someone else, but we do not. All the records are locked up you know, in, in um, you know, our cabinets and they're secured and uh, all their information is confidential. And I think you were telling me that when the state comes back with a positive or negative that you then track these folks down. There's an effort to do this, correct? Right. It comes over on the CDRSS, and Rich Colon is our STD um, disease investigator, so he'll get it over the computer, you know, the positives that he has to go out bring, and tell them to come in for testing. But, you know, or we find them positive from, uh, from our testing. But he also gets referrals from, you know, him being notified by the state. And we do take them as young as uh, 13. They don't have to be with the parent. And they can also bring their school ID, 
you know, like if it was the high school with the picture on it, you know, if they're not driving and they're like 15 or 16, you know, we do take the school ID from them. And we don't tell their parent, like right. some of them come with the parent, but that parent isn't in the room. I mean, even right. though you know the, the student or, you know, the, the patient is coming with his mother and told his mother, but that, you know, that person's not letting the room right. with them. Okay. And even if the parent tries to ask us, yeah. you know, what's going on with my son or my daughter, we do not share any information. I, I mean, I was, it's good that we explain that because I think a lot of people watching will probably say, hey, uh, you know, why should I go to that clinic and how do I know my confidentiality is being protected? Yeah, it's, it's important. Yeah, so, Karen, you were talking absolutely. about pediatric issues as well. That's on Thursday. Uh, some things we're doing with kids. Well, we have our pediatric uh, vaccine clinic right. that runs, uh, you know, every day, Monday, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, Tuesdays, it's at 12.30 in the afternoon at the Peterstown Community Center. On Monday, Wednesday, and at Thursday, it's at 8.30. Okay. Um, so March is uh, Colon Cancer Awareness Month, and we encourage our residents to get checked. Uh, I know how important. My dad died of colon cancer, so I've gone, probably had seven colonoscopies already, but how, imp how important is this from a nursing standpoint? It's the easiest cancer to cure, correct, if it's right, caught early? it is. It is. It's the um, second leading cancer killer among adults 50 years of age and older. And um, it's easily detectable and could be prevented if people would go and get their screenings done and get tested, have their colonoscopies or have what other, uh, other testing that the doctor might suggest or recommend. And if they did that, the, the, the statistics show there's about 60 percent of adults that could be, you know, colon cancer could be prevented if they were to do that. Now, there's a thing called a virtual colonoscopy, right? They, they oh. can look from the outside. I mean, have you heard of this exam yet? Right. That's yeah. something. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. something newer, but that's also it. Really depends. If they find on, something, they still have to go inside. Right. It really depends on on you and I mean your family history. If you have any family history, mm -hmm. if you have had um, um, any, you know problems in the past or you have any symptoms. So that's something really a patient would have to discuss with their doctor to determine the best uh, screening method available. And how do we encourage you? people come in? Do we talk to people and say, hey, you know, if you're over 50, you should really go get a screened. Uh, right. Or if you're high risk, you know, you might have to go right. younger, but it depends on the doctor and like your insurance, if they'll cover it, you know, but right. you know, if it's high risk or runs in your family, then, you know, they would cover it. So residents can go to the website and find out about these events. Are yes. the events free? Events are free, yeah. yes. We don't yeah. charge for, for anything. And some of the partners that we're teaming up with to make this possible? Well, Trinitas well, Regional Medical Center is a big one that's coming. They're bringing along, um, oh, you're talking about the health fair or yeah, the anything. public health? Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, the health fair is on uh, Friday, April the 8th at the Peterstown Community Center from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. We have about 28 vendors that are coming uh, from outside, uh, well, so they're from Elizabeth, but then, you know, outside of, you know, uh, our department. Trinitas is, um, they're bringing a CPR and choking mannequin. I believe they had that the last time. That was a big hit. Uh, this somebody that uh, represented from their sleep center. I know that it was like a big hit with, they brought the residents. Somebody choking is a big well, hit. Well, yes, it, it, you know, it was a, a half of a body in the head and, you know, it just, uh, you know, how they did the CPR it was, right was a big hit. Uh, we have a dietitian coming from there and a, a physical therapy. We have Amber Court, the Gateway uh, Family Y is coming. Michael Johnson is coming from there. PNC Bank, Alzheimer's. We have a lot of um, uh, health care organizations that will come to offer, you know, they'll give information about the services they provide uh, if they're a caregiver or they'll call, uh, talk about insurance. They also have um, a uh, vendor that's coming that also can offer jobs to a certified nurse's aide. And we have also on that day, um, Proceed is coming with the van and they go on the outside uh, in the parking lot and they do HIV testing and counseling there also and that's free. So actually twice that week we'll be doing, you know, the HIV, right. one from Trinitas and one, you know, from Proceed. Right. We have Horowitz Pharmacy coming. Neighborhood Health Center, Kessler, the Elizabeth Fire, and EMS, you know, was always there. And we have a lot more, you know. Anybody? Neighborhood Health Center yeah. is coming. They're going to do uh, blood sugar uh, testing and blood pressures 
and we have two pharmacists coming, one from uh, ShopRite and one from, what, Horowitz. Yeah, so besides the Elizabeth website, what phone number can they call if they uh, wanted information on yeah, this? Yeah, 908-820-4250. And we also have a doctor there to offer free breast exams. And uh, we're doing extra syphilis testing okay. also. Right. So. so Eileen, Karen, I want to thank you for taking the time to join us on the show this evening. Thank you. I look forward thank to helping you, you participate thank in you. National Health Week, and I'm glad we're reaching out to the citizens this way. All right, thank you All very right, much. Thank you very much. For Eileen and Karen, please stay with us after these messages. We're back with Mr. Sal Baracco of the Elizabeth Fire Department.